The new Premier League season starts this weekend, and as usual, a number of sides will be fighting for very few European places. With me to talk this over is sports reporters Nick Howson and Tony Mogan. We'll start off with the Champions League. Obviously, there's only four spots available, but there'll be a number of uh, major sides vying for those places. Who do you think is going to make it in the, the race for Europe? Well, I think if we remove you know, the title contenders, you know, or the genuine title contenders in Chelsea, Arsenal and, and Manchester City, obviously we're looking at really sort of probably one one position for sort of, you know, I would say four, four teams you know, battling for that. We look at Liverpool, obviously finished second last year, just put two points behind Manchester City. I think Manchester United will uh, provide a renewed challenge, if not a successful one, under Louis van Gaal. Um, Everton, who have made a number of, uh, retained a number of key individuals, uh, both, both playing and backroom staff, will certainly be in, in the mix as well. And I think we can give Tottenham uh, an endorsement in terms of going to, going, you know, challenging towards Europe. There is a squad there of, of, of quality that just isn't fulfilling its potential and hasn't and didn't do at all last season. And some individuals who, who barely even played last season, they, they bought in to try and replace Gareth Bale. So I think there's certainly four. I don't think anything, anyone outside that, the likes of Newcastle United, I don't think they've improved enough to really push for a European spot or certainly the Champions League. So I think it's one from four for me. Yeah, it will be um, a renewed emphasis on that fourth spot uh, and the race now would say like for places fifth and sixth, which will be inevitably going to be seen as consolation prizes. Uh, as Nick mentioned, um, it's progress in itself in the fact that they've managed to keep hold of their key players and secure the services of these key players such as Ross Barkley and John Stones uh, and of course keeping Gareth Barry on a permanent basis and Romelu Lukaku on the same deal. Um, that reinforces Everton's ambition, uh, but in terms of them improving enough to make that extra leap, I, I don't think it's quite there. Um, solidifying their presence there is, is important in the grand scheme of things, uh, knowing that clubs around them, such as Tottenham, are regrouping and are capable of relaunching. Same with Manchester United, uh, with Louis van Gaal there now. Um, so it will be very important for Everton to sort of continue this, this progress and ensure that they are the team there, they have fifth place locked and they will be the team always pushing for fourth, which I think is Roberto Martinez's initiative there. Um, it will be this season, uh, maybe more of the same, but proving that in itself, that the club are capable of more of the same, uh, will be a step forward in the grand scheme of things for the club. Mm, I mean, in, in Robert Lukaku signing, a record deal from, from Chelsea, I mean, that's a statement of intent in itself. Keeping, as you say, the likes of Barkley, um, being able to keep him, I mean, but in, you know, actually convincing Barkley to stay, and you know, Roberto Martinez to uh, to believe in the project that he's building there is, is fantastic. For Martinez to sign himself, also sign a new contract as well. So Everton have, have really have got the foundations to, for what should be a really good season. They've kept the four most important individuals from their from last year, of which they flirted with the Champions League, you could say. So they'll they'll put up a, a really good challenge. It's really interesting to see how Tottenham get on this year with so many of those players that were bought in to replace Gareth Bale having really floundered under the Andre Vierge, Boas, Tim Sherwood axis um, that operated uh, last season. Um, the likes of Eric Lamella, I mean, not really sure if he's still, I mean, we've seen him in pre-season, but before that there was genuine, you know, <laughs> might have even existed. I mean, there's, you know, there's, was nowhere last year. Roberto Saldado was another one, he was there um, in person only, you know, there was no, there was no, no form to speak of there. Um, interesting to see how they, they those two in particular get on. Maurizio Pochettino as well coming in has made very few alterations, um, very few new signings. We may well, I'm sure we'll see one, maybe two more before the window closes. Interesting to see how he gets on as well because his reputation when he came from when he came from Spain and really in what he did with Southampton was taking teams who were borderline relegation candidates and making them a a, you know, respectable top half side. This now he's taking a team who are perennial sixth, you know, fifth or sixth place finishers, making them a fourth or third, and taking them to that next step that Harry Redknapp did. I mean, he needs to sort out that defence. They, it's creaking. Is it would be a compliment. Um, in Michael Dawson, um, they have among you know arguably one of the worst defenders playing for a team in the top half of the table. Um, consistently for the top you know, team in the top half of the table. They've brought in Eric Dyer. He's not on his own going to be able to solve those defensive woes um, at centre back. And they really need they re they need to re and, you know, Vlad Kirik has you know he reminds me of sort of a waiter trying to clear a table of, of eight people. 
all at once. He's going to he's going to drop a clanger at some point. Um, so there's, there's problems there for Tottenham in their, in their defence. And the other two, you know, obviously with Manchester United and Liverpool, big names, and they're really going to have to settle for fourth, in, in my opinion. It's interesting you say that Man United and Liverpool settle for fourth. Everton and Spurs, two sides who obviously will hope for Champions League, but it's not a common sight for them to achieve that. For Liverpool, they finally qualified again for the Champions League after all those years, but they're going to have to juggle, I guess, European competition with the, a tough domestic season. And, and Manchester United, can they really afford to have another season outside of Europe's uh, Premier competition? They certainly can't afford in, in literal terms um, because, I mean, Louis Van Gaal has put a lot of onus on the, the commercial side of the club since, you know, in, in the one or two press conferences that he's given since he was officially appointed. Um, so he knows the significance, whether that's been drummed into him or whether that's, you know, his, his, own, aware, his own awareness. I'm sure it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, he'll 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 know the uh, the significance of trying to qualify for the Champions League again. What worries me about United is there's a lot to do there. Um, in you know making up the gap to the, the the top four, let alone to Manchester City, the champions, um, in one summer. And he, well, he's barely had a summer. He's barely, he's barely had a month um, in Charles Day before his opening game. And I'm not sure he's really actually addressed the the points of. You know, the areas that really need attention, um, particularly in defence. Um, we've seen three high-profile defenders go. Really, only Luke Shaw is really the only replacement we've really seen um, with Patrice Evra. Um, we've seen nothing, no centre-backs brought in at all as yet. Um, and it's interesting, I wonder in some ways, if David Moyes had been the manager of this summer and done the same, been the same, you know, would he... You know, would he have survived the public execution? I'm sure someone would have run him down on the way there because something tells me, you know, I don't think Van Gaal's managed it particularly well, and yet his experience, which I'm sure will count for an awful lot, come the season when the season starts, and managing um, a club in in transition, That's, he has capabilities far beyond what Moyes had. But his actual management in the transfer window, for which Moyes was so, was so criticised, has been very similar. So. I think there's an awful lot to do with Manchester United and I don't think that a season, let alone a summer, is long enough for Van Gaal to do that. Yeah, the, um, the first season is always going to be integral to how United's fortunes will shape in the coming years. Uh, a lot of people have sort of made, the, the, uh, made a comparison to the situation Liverpool were presented with last season when they had no European commitments. Um, their, their Premier League campaign was the be-all and end-all of the season and it worked to marvellous effects for the club and for Brendan Rodgers. Um, United find themselves in a similar position now this term, but it's, it's so easily said than done to uh, have a week off and go into the game and operate as effectively as you did seven days ago, uh, particularly under a new system, under a new manager, maybe new players, we'll have to wait and see about that. I don't think it will be easier, as some commentators have suggested, uh, for the gap to be closed, for United to get back into that top four. Um, the, the players uh, that were there last season are still there and Van Gaal has brought with him an air of authority, an air of enthusiasm, uh, everything the club lacked last season to get themselves back into the places. But until they have the players there, there's still going to be questions asked. They won't have as many commitments, so there won't be as big a workload. Um, but we're still talking about a Premier League campaign here. It's, it's in no means um, an easy process just because there's one less game a week. Mm. I think with Liverpool, just touch on them, you know, that balancing the Champions League uh, group stage or however far they go with their Premier League commitments. I think in some ways, Brendan Rodgers is trying to build two teams there. If you just look at the players that he's tried to bring in, the likes of Lazar Markovic uh, and perhaps Emre Khan as well, who know the continental style slightly better, albeit they're young, um, will be implemented in the Champions League, whereas the players like Adam Lallana who's never played in the Champions League before. Ricky Lambert, again, never played in, in, uh, in top-tier European football. They're the players that will be, the onus will be on to try and you know, win those, um, you know, the majority of the, of the games against outside players, teams outside the, the top four. Um, so I think there is, a, there is a, a shrewd, it has operated relatively shrewdly upon, after the, the Suarez uh, departure. As we've mentioned previously, he was never going to, He's never going to be able to replace Suarez with one single player. Um, that player just isn't, isn't you know, they're not obtainable to Liverpool on any price, really. And we're looking at Lionel Messi's and the Zlatan Ibrahimovic of this world. 
So that's never going to happen. But I think he's managed the situation quite well. Not the same as Tottenham, I don't think. Whereas I think they just threw money at players. They smashed the transfer record three times in one summer. Liverpool have been a bit more coy about it. And I think, in some ways, it doesn't worry me balancing those two. For some reason, I, I, can, see, I can see Liverpool being fine. And in some ways, I think progress is to still finish in the top four. Solidifying a top four spot, whether it be second or whether it be fourth, you know, it's, that's a sign of progress for me for Liverpool. Well, if you think then that uh, Manchester City, Chelsea and Arsenal are the clear favourites for the title, put your final predictions now as to who you reckon will get that fourth and final European place. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to... I, I think there's too much to do at Old Trafford for Louis van Gaal. And I think, as therefore, I think, I think Liverpool will, will have enough. Uh, they've got enough domestic experience, uh, regardless of how they do in the Champions League. To finish, to finish in that fourth spot for me. I think they've got, they've got enough. Daniel Sturridge should provide enough firepower, get enough chances. Um, and I think, I think Liverpool will be fine for that fourth spot for me. Uh, I'm yet to be convinced of whether Liverpool have adequately done what they are capable of in terms of trying to uh, fill the void left by Suarez, an impossible task, fair enough. Uh, there have seemed to be too many players there who are, are capable of filling a, filling a gap, but not imposing themselves on a club whose aspirations uh, need to stay as high as they were last season. If we take the Suarez uh, situation out, I don't see a radical improvement in terms of personnel in other areas of the team. Uh, the, the lack of depth uh, was there to see last season, and it's it's a side that it's a squad sorry that is capable of performing in two competitions, but whether they're capable of thriving in both of them or even one of them uh, remains to be seen. And it will be difficult for Van Gaal, but the schedule and just uh, the feeling of uh, we're, we're over the worst in recent memory will be a lot to galvanise the players uh, over the course of the season. The light schedule will help as well, but uh, it, that won't play a bigger a role as many suggest, but it will help. <laughs> so yes, Manchester United. <laughs> well, for all our Premier League coverage, go to our website, ibtimes.co.uk forward slash sport.